and welcome to a rather cursed edition of the Oddity Archive. Because I haven't had a cursed episode in a while now, and I was clearly overdue for one. So anyway, today's episode was initially supposed to be just another mundane Ben's Junk installment, almost about two months ago now. Although I guess I shouldn't say that, because I mean, <laughs> Ben's Junk could never be mundane. But it was one of those deals where I hit every conceivable pothole, and I found myself going down at least a little bit of a technological rabbit hole to boot. So I figured after a while, well, the journey seems to be just as important as the end result, and they're also just inextricably linked, so maybe I ought to turn this into one of my little pseudo-documentaries. And I have, and that's what you're going to be watching here today. Unfortunately, that means unleashing my second Ben vs. episode in a row on you here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, what we're going to do here is, for one, we're going to take a look at my attempt at, I guess you could say, rebuilding something of an old rig I had at the original Archive HQ, but foolishly gave away before I moved. But more importantly, all that leading up to the main event, which will be looking at a truly obscure bit of interactive television ephemera. And not only that, a bit of ephemera that would allow, for all intents and purposes, anyone anywhere with a certain little handheld device and a tube TV to participate in, in real time, to an episode of everybody's favorite game show, uh, albeit without prizes, Wheel of Fortune! It's never quite the same without the crowd, is it? This new Wheel of Fortune game comes with everything, except me. By 1988, there'd already been at least two major stabs at home versions of Wheel of Fortune. At least two editions of a board game, and a video game version, available on the NES and Commodore 64. But it was the third crack at a home game that, in my opinion, proved to be the truly creative one. So there's one crucial bit of context that needs established here. From 1983 to 1991, there were two simultaneously running versions of Wheel of Fortune, one daytime version on NBC and later CBS, and a syndicated evening version, which, as of my making this, is still going strong. So, from August 31st, 1988 through September 1st, 1990, you could use a Mattel Wheel of Fortune TV play-along handheld device to play along, in real time, to an airing or off-air recording of the evening syndicated version of the show. Now, to me, that's a pretty brilliant concept. I mean, who doesn't want to play along to Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy or whatever, and not to mention have it treat you as if you're there in the studio, <laughs> though, alas, no prizes to be won. Now, trying to recreate this at this point in time has turned out to be a much taller order than I expected. The oddity gods really seem to be conspiring against me on this one. Late last year, a viewer offered to send me this device. A device that I had never heard of before. And while that initial donation never did come to pass, it intrigued me enough to eventually pursue this whole idea on my own. Half because in my collection of off-air videotapes, I just so happened to have an episode of Wheel of Fortune from the appropriate time period, on Betamax no less, 
and half because there only seems to be one other demo of this thing online, and that only involves some prepackaged VHS tapes. Uh, more on that in just a second here. But anyway, when I finally decided to really pursue this, I went on good old Fleabay, and a quick search led me to the Mattel Wheel of Fortune TV play-along, which I was relieved to find out had a pair of uh, prepackaged VHS tapes, the ones I just mentioned. And uh, of course, you could, you know, play along to them. And it the idea being that in case my off-air recording didn't work, I'd have a fail-safe. So anyway, after that, it became this seemingly endless quest to cobble together a full and fully functioning set. Yeah, more on that later. And then there was also the two-ton gorilla in the room to confront. The fact that I, in retrospect, foolishly gave away my old CRT TV when I left Colorado back in 2018. The reason for this being that this game operates the same way that old video game light guns work, you know, like the Nintendo Zapper. It needs to reflect properly off of the TV screen. Now, of course, in the name of due diligence, I did try this out on a modern flat screen HD TV and, you know, just to make sure I wasn't wasting my time. And as I expected, nothing happened at all. And down the rabbit hole I went. The reason I gave away my old CRT TV was because in Denver, you couldn't walk 50 feet without stumbling over an old CRT TV. So, fool that I am, I figured it would be just the same way out here in South Dakota. And, uh, boy, was I wrong. Now, I had my figurative antenna up for an old and ideally nice and small CRT TV since I moved here. And all I ever saw on Craigslist and so on were flat screens or large tube TVs. And I mean large to the point where it would have to be permanently set up. And I just, I don't want that. But uh, seemingly by divine providence, as I was starting up this episode, two TVs turned up on the Facebook marketplace. One in Lenox, about 15 miles southwest of me and one in Valley Springs, about 15 miles north of me, right along the South Dakota-Minnesota border. But wanting to guarantee that I would have at least one working tube TV in my possession, I opted to pick up both of them. And I am happy to report that both of them work just fine. Unfortunately, that was the easy part. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, just briefly... This is the TV we're going to be using today. This is a 13-inch Insignia from 2005. It is crazy close to my old Hitachi, only this is silver, and it's just dumb luck that silver photographs better than black. Now, with both of the TVs that I picked up, the owners had just thrown them in the garage, which wound up not hurting the TVs, but they also threw the remotes out there with them, too. And they still had the batteries in the remotes, which, of course, in both cases had erupted at some point. And even after doing the whole baking soda water thing, wire brush thing, the remotes were just completely gone. So I wound up running out to Family Dollar and picking up just a couple of these cheap universal remotes. And they only kind of half work. As of my making this, I wound up having to flea bay the original remotes for both TVs, and neither of them have shown up yet. But anyway, just quickly here, the multitude of features on this TV are as follows. We've got a coax jack in the back, we've got a composite video input and a mono audio input, and a headphone jack that I'll likely never use. Okay, let's get back to Wheel of Fortune here. These handheld units are nice and cheap and plentiful on good old Fleabay. 
but complete boxed games are a bit more rare, as are the two pre-made VHS tapes that you could buy separately at the time. Now, as you've already seen, I was able to find a set of the original box and the game and all the documentation, but the real selling point was that it had both of those tapes. Uh, although Volume 1 was missing the sleeve, but uh, hey, Volume 2 was still sealed. Operative word was. But unfortunately, Volume 1 here had gone sticky, and uh, of course I wound up having to bake it. Somehow in this process, one of the umpteen springs that you find within a VHS tape had given. Well, uh, I guess it's a good thing I keep some sacrificial tapes lying around, so I was able to fix that. But uh, with that in mind, and uh, getting back to the baking thing, that tape baking took place almost a week ago. Just to put in perspective how long this drama has been going on, and is still going on as of my making this. But uh, yeah, unless I got really lucky and completely restored this tape, the norm when you bake a tape is that it ought to be good for about two weeks. So I'm down to one week now, so I definitely need to get this documented. But anyway, this was just the tip of the iceberg. So as implied, someone had just chucked that entire package in their presumably garage God knows how many years ago, and the battery was still attached to the main game. And shock of shocks, it leaked. So uh, I was able to clean off the corrosion with the usual baking soda water mix, and I got the game working again. However, when I took the new 9-volt battery off, because I have a habit of taking the batteries out of things, the entire connector clip literally disintegrated in my hand. So I ordered a pack of new connectors and the good solid hard ones, not the cheesy soft ones like the ones that came with the game. And uh, I desoldered and removed the old connector and in installing the new one proceeded to burn one of the circuit board traces. And also, although unbeknownst to me at the time, managed to screw up the grounding. So, in the name of due diligence, even though I figured I fried the thing, I tested it anyway, and shock of shocks, it got real hot real quick. And no, I didn't get the wires crossed. But uh, I guess it's a good thing that a replacement only cost me about eight bucks after shipping. And also in the plus column, despite some cosmetic issues on this thing, on the screen, which may or may not show up on camera, this works just fine. Well, as fine as the technology allows. And that's one more thing we'll have to get back to. Now, I have had success in the past transferring VHS and beta tapes to DVD and retaining stuff like the closed captioning. So, you know, seemingly keeping the vertical blanking interval info intact. So I figured with that being the case, I could just transfer my newly baked volume one tape and use that for my demos and not have to worry about the extra wear and tear on the tape and the VCR and possibly this thing going sticky on me again. But unfortunately, the DVD that I burned did not retain the necessary info. And for the record, I used the lowest compression, highest quality setting on this. So my guess is that there's something in the data compression that's keeping the interactive data that was initially on the tape from properly carrying over, but uh, maybe someone in the comments has a better theory on that than I do. But anyway, the bottom line is this whole setup only works 100% analog. You cannot use anything else but an original tape and you must use a CRT TV. There just seems to be zero leeway on this one. Since there's no great way of doing any kind of direct feed footage in this context, you know, as far as the gameplay goes, we're going to have to settle for some forced camera perspective. 
But having said that, there is absolutely nothing that says I can't run at least the intro to one of the prepackaged tapes directly, so we'll start with that. And I should note that it is the same on Volumes 1 and 2. And while everything on here is correct and perfectly informative, let's just say I hope your cheese tolerance is good and high. And I hope you're not too attached to Pat Sajak and or Vanna White because they are nowhere to be found. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and pop this sucker in. Ready to play Wheel of Fortune with your VCR? <laughs> Good! All you need is your Wheel of Fortune game, TV, VCR, and this tape, packed with 90 fun and challenging puzzles. Now, before we play, I want to give you some basic instructions. First, set your game to the VCR game mode, and choose the number of players. Press Enter and your game says to aim it at the TV screen. Now get your VCR ready. Press play. A puzzle appears on your TV screen. Each puzzle is numbered at the top of your screen. Now to receive the puzzle, point your game at the TV screen. You'll hear a musical theme. You'll know you're aiming correctly when the red LED light is brightly lit. When the tune ends, the puzzle has been received by your game. And the game tells you it's ready. If ready doesn't appear on your screen, just rewind your tape to the beginning of the puzzle and point your game at the TV screen again. When you see the ready signal on your game screen, Wait until you see this message on your TV screen. Then stop the tape. Be sure you press the stop button, not pause. The blank puzzle appears on your game screen. Now get ready for fun. Player one starts the game by spinning. But wait, I know you're anxious to play. But the great thing about this tape is that if you forget any instructions, just rewind to this part of the tape and play it whenever you need help. Or refer to the instruction booklet that comes with your game. So go ahead and have fun. Okay, let's go ahead and get this fired up. So on, we'll need to select VCR. Now this is persnickety and not very reliable but I've had the best luck kind of being close and aiming low. And unfortunately, I don't think my mic's going to pick up the theme. Yeah, that was a failure right out of the gate. Let's try that again. All right, finally, we got a ready. And it says to stop the tape, we shall do just that. And I guess I better spin the wheel before it gets mad at me. $800. Now I'm of the age group where like if you make it to the final round they just give you R, S, T, L, N, and E. So let's just start with an R. Lovely. Now wouldn't it be sad if I lost a turn or something playing against myself? No S's. All right. T. All right. Free spin, like I really need it. Nope, no L's. N. 
wonder if that first word is maybe getting. Let's let's try a G. Okay, lovely. Uh, I guess I'll buy an E. How about buying an I? Okay, we got a, a one letter word there. So I, I assuming I'm assuming that's an A. I can't imagine what else that would be. Getting a I can't think of anything that's not dirty. Uh, how about an O? We'll just go through our vowels here. Uh, okay, I, I think I got it. getting a, a promotion perhaps. So solve P R. Hey. All right, should, should we try one more just for the hell of it? See if I can make lightning strike twice. And just made it under the wire. So I guess I better stop that tape. All right, so let's spin the wheel. $400 that I will never see. Uh, how about a T? Oh, that's right, I have to spin first. Formalities. Short, maybe? Uh, the, I'm assuming that's the same word twice. Okay, so I got that part right. Uh, s smart or short? Should I try smart or short here? Oh, did I lose a turn there and not even know it? Nope, no M. H? Okay, I think I know it. Let's try and... Yeah, I think I know this one already. Let's go ahead and solve it. So let's do a short-sleeved shirt. Hey, all right. How much fake money did I win? $2,300. Lovely. Now, unfortunately, there is no bonus round. There is nothing more to these prepackaged tapes. And there are no more host segments. No, nothing. It's just those very basic uh, formulaic puzzles. So uh, you know what that means, right? It's time to bust out the Betamax and play along with a real episode of Wheel of Fortune. Normally I would be screeching to the heavens about this kind of tape. So this is a first generation Scotch Betamax L500, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They are perfectly decent tapes. But uh, this is probably from 1978 or 79, and as such, I would normally be hoping for recordings of that vintage, or at least close to it. However, whoever recorded this reused it many times, going all the way into the 90s. Uh, the only saving grace here being our Wheel of Fortune episode, and that's right at the end. And to make matters worse, this tape was already a bit worn out when I got it, but due to the technical demands of this little exercise of mine, I've had to place that much more wear and tear on it. And getting back to my whole recurring cursed episode thing, this tape had one of those number stickers, uh, both on the sleeve and on the tape, so right at the tip of my finger, it has since fallen off the sleeve, but it was one of those generic number stickers that early home video adopters used to use to organize their little tape libraries. And so the one that was on the tape proper decided during one of my test runs that it was going to fall off into the guts of my beta deck. And not only did it do that, it got into the gears. So that meant I had to partially dismantle the beta deck to get it out. But uh, the good news is my beta deck has indeed lived to play another day. So without further ado, let's get to our main event here. So we, or I, will now play along to an original off-air recording from the summer of 1990. So 
right at the end of this little experiment. And I'm going to do it just like they did 30 plus years ago, and I'm probably the first to try this since then. Now, I should note here that uh, you saw that the VHS was pretty clunky. Well, uh, this is even worse. Uh, it may take me a few takes to get through it. Uh, Lord knows I know the first puzzle by heart at this point. But uh, I should also note that this was truly an off-air recording. It, it was a rabbit ears recording. And while the reception wasn't awful or anything, it wasn't great either. So between that and the wear and tear on the tape, it's truly clunky. But uh, anyway, um, I should also note that I know there's a lot of game show geeks that watch archives, so assuming YouTube will allow it, I will try and post this episode to Archive Annex in its entirety. You won't be able to, you know, play along with it or anything, but uh, hey. So, let's get down to business. Magic, fantasy, fun, excitement, special friends, and fabulous fireworks on Wheel of Fortune. Lots of cash, wonderful prizes, over $148,000 given away so far this week. And now, here are your host and hostess, Pat Sajak and Vanna White. Now, one interesting, quirky thing about these off-air recordings, or a, a would-be live broadcast, is that you can effectively set this up right out of the gate. So, like, right at the top of the show, before the contestant intros and all that. So, let's try and get a little bit of a jump on it here. Obviously, I've waited a bit. But uh, we need classic mode, so we'll go ahead and hit enter. Aim at TV. And we'll see if it actually loads the puzzle. Which may or may not happen. Oh, hey, we got lucky. So it is indeed ready. Now we just got to wait for it to come up on screen. But you'll notice that it happens pretty much in time to the episode. So keep an eye on both at once if you can. So check that out. So I already know the answer to this one, but I'll go ahead and take a turn. And I'll pick the same letter that the contestant does. Now, this may get mad at me for waiting too long, but I want another letter to be picked so that you can see something cool that happens. And again, hopefully it doesn't get too angry at me. So did you see that? It happens right with the episode. So it got a little mad at me there, but it picked the E right in time with the episode. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a turn or two here and intentionally pick wrong letters. So there are no Bs in this one, for example. And we'll see if, uh, I know the next letter is going to be an L. You may very well know the answer to this one already. And uh, given it's uh, the company that must not be named for this theme week that they were doing, it should be pretty obvious. It was a, a pretty famous then recent movie. So I'll pick another intentionally wrong one. Hopefully it doesn't get cranky with me. An R? Yes, there's one R. Lovely. So I'm just going to go ahead and solve this one. I'll see. So I beat my competition. 30 plus years late. So now I'm going to have to sit here 
and wait for the next puzzle, which is another four minutes or so out. So I'm going to take a cut here and you will rejoin me and hopefully we can make it two for two here because if it doesn't work, I will have to start the episode all over again. I have found that I cannot jump to a specific puzzle and make it uh, stay in sync with the episode, unfortunately. Okay, so we're still waiting on the next puzzle, but it went ahead and loaded it for me. So now we just have to wait for it to, you know, actually happen. And of course, it would just be my luck to be the company that must not be named. Now, I don't remember what this one is, so this will hopefully be a little fresher. So let's go ahead and just take a, a random shot at it here. B. Nope, didn't think so. So let's see if the first letter they pick exists. Yes, there's one. So I'll go ahead and take another turn. And I'm just going to intentionally pick kind of dumb letters here. Yes, there are. See, I knew it before they did, and I don't even remember this. So I'm assuming the word I'm comes up twice in here. I'll go ahead and take another spin. And uh, what's a, a crappy letter? X? Yeah. Awesome. So, hey, I won 3,000 imaginary dollars. So, uh, I, I'm just kind of shocked that I had as much success here as I have. So, that's nice. Uh, a bit of a payoff after all the hell I've been through making this. I'm going to go ahead and turn that volume down since it's not really important anymore. So, yeah. Hey, success. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join me next time when I delve into the finer points of the stab at an interactive version of Jeopardy. Namely, Phone Jeopardy. She drank the poison that Captain Hook intended for Peter Pan. Tinkerbell! Fuck him.